what is going on right now on Enlightened Society. What's going on right now is among the most profound questions that can be asked, and especially in our current age. It's closer to a scientific version of an ancient Zen koan. It involves a technique devised with the same purpose, just with the help of our modern understanding. The quality of our answers provides insight into our own level of consciousness at any given moment. And it's a question that we can ask ourselves regularly as a way to map our own consciousness over time. The following discourse should not be thought of as the right answer, but is intended to be a helpful guide in answering the question for yourself. The value will not be found in repeating this verbatim, but rather in your ability to evoke the answer spontaneously. This question, what is going on right now, is very different than almost any other questions that we come across. It was not created to be an academic curiosity or to be entertaining, though it could be both. It was created to be a valuable starting place and helpful perspective when trying to make sense of the labyrinth of existence. The question what is going on right now would take an eternity to fully elaborate. The best answer is not a description, it's a direct experience. In a sentence, what is going on right now is that we are the universe experiencing itself. We are right in the middle of the infinite eternity. Right now, this is one of the infinite ways that reality occurs, that it emerges, that it feels. This statement is made of words and concepts such as infinity and eternity. These are representations, and representations are different than the actual thing. That's key. In addition to that, the words infinity and eternity are actually too limiting. They refer to the dimensions of time and space. But from quantum physics, we know that time and space are emergent properties of the universe. They are not fundamental, so there is far more than just infinity and eternity. Thus language, in its very essence, distorts reality, and we live out most of our lives as though linguistic representations are fixed realities. For example, if somebody points to a tree and asks, what is that? We would commonly answer, that's a tree, as if that's what it actually is. A more accurate answer would be to say that we call it a tree, and then describe its functions and processes, because that's closer to what it is. It's a flowing series of functions and processes over time. A still further, more accurate answer would require an explanation of everything, since what something is actually depends on everything else. Such an answer would take an eternity, which again is also limited. The problem arises when we treat things like we think of them, but they are always so much more. Do you see the problem? We treat ourselves and the world like we think of them, and that is so limited. We rarely get at what anything really is throughout our lives, and therefore we live largely on the periphery. We have very little capacity for direct experience beyond the periphery. This is a result of our biological and cultural evolution. And this is the realm that most of humanity lives out their lives. This distinction becomes crucial when trying to directly know and understand reality. And the question, what is going on right now, 
is meant to distinguish between these kinds of knowing. Language can, paradoxically, be a platform that frees us from its own constraints. We want to use language as a helpful tool and don't want to get lost in representations of reality. So this discourse will be very different than the kind found in academia, for example. Its purpose is to directly expand our common levels of consciousness. Directly knowing is enlightenment. Not directly knowing is any other state of consciousness. Let's begin by breaking down the question, what is going on right now, into its component parts. What is, is a profound question when answered thoughtfully. The word is, is rarely ever noticed, but it's perhaps the most fundamental word. The word is means existence. And suddenly we go from having a conversation about various phenomena within existence to talking about existence itself. One could actually become enlightened by realizing the significance of the word is. That's how deep it goes. We know about what is through all of our senses, whether by our five primary senses or any related senses like balance and temperature. It also includes what other animals and plants can sense, like echolocation. It also includes what our technological instruments can sense, like gamma rays and quarks. And just because we can't currently sense something does not mean that something doesn't exist. For most of human history, we couldn't sense radio waves, even though they were everywhere. On the quantum level, particles are constantly coming into existence and returning back into fields. In fact, all of so-called empty space is teeming with energetic activity. Right in front of us and everywhere, this is occurring. Finally, what is also includes what we can deduce from logic, science, and mathematics. The next part of what is going on right now is going on. In order to talk about what is, we have to take into account the trajectory of time what has been and will be. Going on is an unfolding process. What is is not static, but is ever-changing over time. Lastly, what is going on right now? Right now focuses our consciousness on the process of the present moment, where the entire universe is occurring. All of existence is right now. Right now includes everything that has ever happened, because right now is the culmination of that. It's the latest version. Right now is the expression of all existence. And that only ever occurs now. What's going on right now is that we exist. There is existence. Existence is not ordinary, except in our minds. Nothing could be more profound than existence. Not the concept, but existence itself. This, right now, is the miracle. The mere possibility of existence is astonishing. What's going on right now is that we are the universe. We are the universe becoming conscious of itself. This is what the universe sees. This is what the universe hears. This is what the universe thinks and feels and smells and tastes. All the senses of all living beings is what the universe senses. The universe emerges from the unbroken symmetry. Dimensions like space and time emerge from the broken fields. 
matter and forces emerge from the broken fields in the form of particles, which become atoms and molecules, which give rise to stars and planets, which gives rise to cells and life and the evolution of living beings. We are the emergent beings out of boundless fields of energy and dimensions that have solidified into networks of interacting phenomena, vibrating waveforms, processes, systems, and interchanges. We are manifestations of the infinite spectrum of eternity, which includes emptiness, and stillness and silence. What's going on right now is the miracle of all miracles. We are immersed in the miracle. We are the universe interacting with itself in all its forms. That is what's going on right now. That is why we are here. We need to develop a consciousness capable of recognizing the significance of this beyond just hearing these concepts. Concepts are not enough. They only point to the realization and experience. They are not the experience itself. And nothing can take the place of the direct realization. Realizing and experiencing this is the centerpiece of being. It's the purpose of life. This is primary. Nothing even compares. This realization is heaven, if we could only realize it and act accordingly. Matter rose from the quantum flux. It has become conscious in us. Until now, our species has largely dealt with our immediate needs. Now it's time to evolve into our next form of being. Until we realize what's going on right now, this is not true for most of us, most of the time. For most of us, this is just another ordinary moment in another ordinary day. All of this is ordinary and normal. You are so-and-so and you live at such-and-such -such place and these are your friends and family, and those are the enemy. You have been here and there and have seen this and that. You have thought and said and tried and felt, etc., etc. And for most of us, this is just more of that. In the back of our minds, though, we have hoped and yearned for something grand. Many of us have briefly glimpsed and experienced that possibility before. But it's gone now and is impossible to get at for more than a fleeting moment. But almost nobody ever talks about it, and few are interested in it, and even fewer know about it. Occasionally we come across authors and speakers or writers that seem to be leading somewhere but it often turns out to be of little value in the end. They are as lost as we are, so we remain lost and likely to never know it directly. I want to assure you that not only does the grand miracle exist, nothing except that exists. All of that normal stuff was the grand miracle, just like this is right now. We don't realize that the very fact that there is any of this, that there is us being here now, this is the miracle. We can't see it. We can't realize it. We can't experience it. But I assure you with all of my being, that it's always available. Our interpretation of reality is the issue. We interpret all of this as ordinary, 
we are lost inside the miracle. We are lost in the story. In order to stop being lost, we have to, ironically, create a new story, but one that also serves as a map, which allows us to escape the maze. So let's expand our awareness of what's going on right now. The technique is to feed our consciousness with a more rounded overview of what's going on. Then we can use that broader platform to look at the world and know it more fully. Let's begin by expanding on a few things mentioned briefly before, like our unconscious assumptions. It cannot be overstated how much more there is to reality right now than we are normally aware of. In fact, it's profoundly more astonishing than we can even imagine. The reality that we experience at every moment, including right now, is only a fragment and slice of the infinite reality. What's going on right now is so vastly complex and ineffable that it's beyond the reach of our descriptions and concepts to get at precisely. It's also important to notice that reality is not static. We unconsciously think that reality is static and that objects like people just move around inside this static world. But it's helpful to be reminded of the endless flux that we are whirling around in and that we are. Right now, the entire universe is a continuously unfolding process. The Big Bang, for example, didn't just happen a long time ago. We are the latest version of that process. We are it. Everything only exists because the universe keeps regenerating it. Everything in us and around us is made of constantly emerging phenomena. It's not static. The processes at every level from fields and forces to atoms and cells keeps emerging moment after moment because that's its natural behavior and it would change if its environment changed. Our material universe only appears static. Space is actually brimming with activity. It seems empty only because much of the activity happens below the atomic scale. All of matter is vibrating. The more that atoms are able to move, the more they seem like fluids and gases. The less that they move, the more solid things appear. That's why there are solid objects. That's why there is air and water. Living beings like us are mixtures of these properties. We emerged in the sweet spot. Not too big, not too small, not too hot, not too cool. Light is also not static. Everything that you are seeing is from newly arriving photons. Light takes time to get from one place to another. It happens so fast that it seems like a static process. The photons transmit information through a whole sequence of events that we eventually interpret as a visual image. But it's always being recreated. It's not static. Everything that we hear is from sound waves that are continuously being generated. It then reaches our ears, which also goes through a complex process that we interpret as an auditory sense. The stars are not static. They are moving in several directions at once. They are orbiting each other. They are spinning around the galaxy. And the galaxies are also moving. The stars are also in the continuous process of implosion, turning energy that is stored as matter into heat and light, like our sun. Also, our best physical model of the universe can't account for 95% of it. So there's plenty that remains a mystery. However, what we've learned through modern physics is that everything we thought was going on in all of human history 
was supremely limited. Time and space are two sides of the same coin. They bend and warp. All matter is a form of energy. Matter is stored energy. Energy emerges in discrete lumps, which creates everything like forces and light. It emerges in pairs that go backwards in time. What I just described is the cutting edge of quantum physics. And even though our perspective is only a tiny fragment, our evolved perspective is a very important story to know. It's important to realize that everything we currently know about the universe and about life is brand new. Nobody has ever known what we know right now. So why is all this here at all? Because it's here, existence could not be otherwise. Because it's here, existence will never disappear. It will only change forms. Not only will this go on forever, it already has gone on forever. We are in the middle of forever, right now. This is one of the infinite ways that it can be. This is one of the ways that it emerges. In the final analysis, nothing is ever gained or lost. It just transforms. We are part of the eternal spectrum. Now that we've disrupted a few common unconscious misconceptions, we are ready to look more deeply at what's going on right now. What we call the universe is better thought of as a broken symmetry, a concept from quantum physics. When we ask what came before the universe, the best answer is the unbroken symmetry. The unbroken symmetry is pure potential. We would say that it's infinite and eternal, but in fact it's even beyond the terms of space and time. It's a pure, fundamental unity. There is nothing that we ordinarily recognize here. It has unbroken dimensions and information. So there are no dimensions like time and space. No mass, no forces, no energy. Everything only exists as a pure potential. Broken symmetries occur from the unbroken symmetry. We call this process a Big Bang. The broken symmetry gives rise to dimensions, or degrees of freedom, where information comes from. A freedom to be this or that, like ones and zeros. From this emerges the dimensions of space, and time, and energy, and also the process of change, which flows from ordered to disordered. You can think of our broken symmetry, our Big Bang, as occurring alongside of the unbroken symmetry, like an apple emerges from a tree. The unbroken symmetry remains in its pure state. However, all we can ever know is within our particular Big Bang. The way the universe appears right now is very different than it has at all the times in the past. It's always changing. The most significant thing to notice about the process of the Big Bang is not the amount of time, but the forms that the universe has taken over its existence, and the major changes that occurred along the way to us. Don't think of the Big Bang as if it were a long time ago. Think of it as what you used to be. At the beginning of the universe, there was only the quantum scale. So no macro scale, no distance, no time, no space. All the matter and forces were very different than now. They evolved over time. Then the universe emerged. Out of darkness came a pure glow of light everywhere. First it became a field of immense heat, releasing unimaginable amounts of energy. Many things that we still don't know much about happened here, like antimatter and other types of matter and energy that don't react with light. Light particles, called photons, bounced off the free-floating electrons. 
As the space expanded, it cooled, and subatomic particles called quarks merged together, creating a nucleus. Then electrons were captured in their fields and became the first atoms. Then the photons were able to spread out, and this allowed the universe to become transparent. Space became dark again due to the lack of so much light. The energy of the photons diminished and shifted from gamma wavelengths to microwave lengths, which we can still see. It's what we call the cosmic background radiation. The atoms were very simple versions, most of which were hydrogen and helium. They were pulled together more and more by the curvature of the space, what we call gravity. It got larger and larger, and the force is so great that they ignited in a nuclear furnace, what we call stars. The stars then collected into groups, what we call galaxies. As the stars turned all their atoms into energy, many exploded, giving us most of the other atoms. Atoms are mainly common inside galaxies, which are tiny glowing dots in a vast cosmic web of dark matter and energy. Atoms are not distributed evenly across the cosmos. Most of the universe outside of the galaxy has one atom in a cubic meter. So being made of atoms is really special. And only four types of atoms make up 99% of the bodies of living beings. The atoms bonded with each other and formed what we call molecules. These simple molecules formed planets and then complex molecules, which eventually created cells and all the life on Earth. What we are is a series of unfolding processes. We are the descendants of 14 billion years of unfolding energy. We are the descendants of 4 billion years of the DNA molecule. We are the descendants of 200 million years of mammals surviving and giving birth, generation after generation. We are the descendants of 10,000 generations of humans adapting to environments, imagining, learning, creating, teaching. What we are is layers of atoms, molecules, cells, organs. We are breathing molecules right now. They are constantly flowing in and out of us, trillions every second. The molecules that largely make us are what we call DNA, RNA, and proteins. They provide a blueprint and instructions for how to build and maintain us. What we are is trillions of cells, each one a living being with a complex life, full of its own processes and events, with an entire ancestry going back to the first cells billions of years ago. They are constantly working, regenerating, reproducing. For the most part, we are all new cells every few months, constantly growing and shedding, millions every day. Brain cells communicating, blood cells traveling, skin cells regenerating, heart cells pumping, and a hundred other types of cells performing some crucial role to keep us alive. Cells have learned to work together to form organs, each with a complex role that has emerged and adapted for hundreds of millions of years in countless individuals and species. They all work together to form our body processes, like thinking, breathing, growing, repairing, cleaning, expelling, all being now. We are one species among millions of species, existing in an inextricably linked web of flowing energy. 
99% of which have gone extinct over the course of this earth. The living world is primarily bacterial cells. The entire globe is covered in single-celled organisms. There are more bacteria on us and inside us than there are human cells, which are in the trillions. What we are is systems, a sensory system, a circulatory system, a nervous system, a digestive system, an endocrine system, an immune system, a lymphatic system, muscular system, reproductive system, respiratory system, and a skeletal system, none of which are static. They are all in constant flux. They just move at a different speed. These systems are all working together to allow for us to be. We are a multi-sensory apparatus, each sense evolving for hundreds of millions of years. We see radiant energy waveforms. We feel gravitational energy waveforms. Hear sound energy waveforms. We use mechanical energy. We sense temperature, balance, position, pain, among other things. What we are is the process of consciousness, like a multi-sensory camera with narrow to wide-angle lenses, focus, exposure, aperture, and advanced settings with intricate electronics and software. Our consciousness is like a multi-sensory computer with an operating system that's mostly automatic and software that is constantly upgrading and changing settings with different applications being run and closed with little warning. And the operating system is trying to figure itself out during this entire process. What is going on right now is a question that evokes a description about what, where, why, when, and how we are. This focus can turn the explanations of our physical world of matter and forces and our internal biological systems into a profound realization and can shape our understanding of who we are and how to evolve. But this story is mainly valuable because of what it points to. What's vital is the realization of being itself. Not thinking about being, but the direct experience of being. Our particular state of consciousness determines the significance of all that is. We have yet to fully explain the mechanisms of consciousness, but we do have enough information to explain the important aspects of consciousness. Consciousness is an emergent property of the executive functioning of an organism. It is built from information acquired from successively more complex emergent systems, from interacting neural networks, cellular networks, and from interactions of molecules and atoms in the quantum world, each building on information from the next. Significant new capabilities emerge from the degrees of freedom gained at each level. There is not one kind of consciousness. Rather, consciousness emerges on a spectrum. There are endless qualities of consciousness. Consciousness is made up of the sum total of information, networks, and patterns of a particular being. It's dynamic. It's multifaceted. It's complex, and it's layered. Consciousness is most often associated with humans, but each organism has a consciousness that is completely unique. Consciousness takes the form of its container. Since all containers are unique, all consciousness is unique. Thus the reason for the universal sense of separate individual personhood. Consciousness expresses itself differently, based largely on three factors, the species, the culture, and individual variations. 
the human spectrum of consciousness is the product of the unique human spectrum of information and processes. Consciousness always changes. We don't often notice the changes because it usually happens so slowly. But the differences are important because they determine our realities. Its changes are obvious when we compare the differences. Like when waking versus asleep, when we first wake up compared to the middle of the day, compared to just before sleep. Being asleep is also not one thing. Our consciousness fluctuates between deep states and light dreaming states. We are very different than we were over the course of our lives. Compare your consciousness in the womb to just after being born, and each year after that. Consciousness fluctuates over multiple time periods, including monthly, weekly, daily, and over the hours, and minutes, and seconds. The specific consciousness of every human being is unique at every moment in life. When we understand consciousness as a spectrum, we can explore it and map it. Our task is to map our consciousness so that we can see how it flows and changes and what its boundaries are. This is how we become a more complete human being. We step beyond the rigid dichotomy of conscious versus not conscious. Mapping our consciousness allows us to interpret reality ever more precisely and use that map to guide us in ways that are beneficial, such as the ability to realize the significance of all that we are and all that's going on right now and allow us to thrive in this world. It's okay to get lost in our reality bubbles. It's inevitable, and it can be fun, but it's also dangerous when we can't find our way back. I'll give a lengthy discourse on consciousness in the near future. This brief description is mainly here to help distinguish the micro-realities from the macro-reality, or the trees from the forest, so you can know there is a way out. We are the universe. It has woken up to itself in us. We are existence learning about itself, exploring itself. I am one part of the universe interacting with itself in the form of you. The next stage for us individually, as a society and as a species, is an evolution of our consciousness. Our interpretation of what's going on right now is always the product of our own particular consciousness in the moment. Our purpose is to experience what we are. Our purpose is to discover the miracle of now. Everything we're involved in is always new. Everything, right now, is the latest incarnation of ancient processes. This is the miracle.